ashtray and sold her hair to get money, why didn't she just wear a slutty dress from Requiem and go out in the street to make money? So this is kind of about five years ago. I got started in acting, doing a whole entertainment thing, like for reals. So this is like the green room. This is where you get ready at, couch. It's the TV for monitoring. Changing room, wardrobe right there. Another changing wardrobe room. This is a community playhouse. So it's uh, donations, grants, you know, funding. It's a nice little community thing right here. Up here in Alden, PA. So here's my favorite, right? So this was my first acting. And I'm so happy that they did not go over this hand because this right here was when they painted. Somebody put this hand here and I wrote this right here. Kyle Hendrickson was here. So in the play, Clybourne Park, there's this kind of, let's say, infamous character called Kyle Hendrickson. And everybody talks about, they like know him or something, right? <laughs> I put that there and I would touch my hand on that but before every show, before I went up on stage, just so I, I, know, I kind of ground myself. That was kind of like my, my, my stone, like at the Apollo, I would touch it. So then, here we go. Coming out from the stage here. Let's see, look at the spread right there. And this is the view from the stage. Sean, you know Dana? No, I don't know Dana. Dana was in Playboy Park. Yeah. There was quite a show around here from what I understand. Thank you, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. This is Sean's, this is Sean's little daughter, Violet. Hello, Violet. Violet's been quite a few things here. Uh, and she has a very coat, nice coat. Yeah. I like that coat. She's, she's quite a. Yeah. She's quite the actress herself. Oh, see, look, I, I look, I've got. Uh, uh, it's a power color. The color of royalty. And she's, and she's doing stuff downtown, all right. Oh, okay. Like downtown. Like Philly, like acting. In Philly. Yeah, she's in Oh, wow, congrats. Very nice. Sounds like you are on your way. Right. So see, that it's a community here. I would definitely say this is like a community kind of stage here. So this is uh, kind of like the awards going on right here. So a lot of these people haven't seen each other in a while. A, because of the pandemic and because of other things. And you see that lady right there? She basically taught me how to act. And not act, but how to, how to, you know, get into this thing right here. So I'm gonna walk down the stage here. We used to rent. Just uh, walking through. Hello, hello, hello. So. Gave me the base, best piece of acting advice ever. Uh, me? Yeah. What did I say? You, I'll clean it up. You said don't screw it up. <laughs> oh, what an inspiration. It, it worked. Turn that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever turn it off. <laughs> hey. Oh, there he is. Not much. How you feel? Well, or you just do that. Uh, good to be ah, back here. Yeah. Oh man, what a big night! Yeah, really big show. Yeah, really, really big show. Very rock and roll. So we got a couple of awards going on here. Look at this. This is the uh, the 2022 the gala. Look at that. That's the. So the couple of awards tonight will be 
we don't know who, but there were only a couple of shows, so I guess it'll all be to those shows as opposed to parking lot theater. Well, it's always good to just get together just because, right? <laughs> And we got some door prizes. Got the got the door prizes. I wonder if you could actually win a door and the door prizes. Oh, these are raffle prizes, right? Hi, thank you so much for doing that. I'm Liz. Hi, Liz. <laughs> some of the uh, memorabilia. And she Makes a grand entrance. Oh, oh, that's so interesting. Oh, Say what year this was from? Okay, let me see. But, wow. It looks like something from The Shining right there. He's the class of a The history of Colonial Playhouse. While the first production of Colonial Playhouse was staged in 1940, our ancestry is traceable to the resurgence of the Little Theater movement, which swept the country in the early 1930s. About 1933, a group of local people interested in the amateur stage formed the theater group called the Funsters and rented our building, which had been erected as a local clubhouse by the Alden Improvement Association in 1925. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after a two-year hiatus, it is my distinct pleasure to say welcome to the Colonial Playhouse Magnolia Award Gala. <laughs> to begin, please welcome our board president, beginning her second consecutive term, the lovely Samantha Byron. Oh, we do a different name for the last one. I'm sorry, I missed that. We found your sound design 
David Vanderbilt for Three Musketeers. <laughs> David not only designed the sound, but he made an original score throughout the show. Thank you, David. You couldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we have to add a new category for next year. So anyway, congratulations, Alan. Congratulations, Alan. <laughs> A hearty colonial welcome to the funny and talented Christine Sanko, accompanied by the very epitome of elegance and class, His Lordship John Devine. And the winner for Best Stage Manager goes to Robin Caption for Working for Heaven. Presenting the Magnolia Award for Best Costume, it's the duo Jean Marie Martin and Lisa Versella. some very special gifts and two more basket winners. Please welcome Liz McCallum back to the stage. Tonight, we want to take the opportunity to express our thanks to some people who never get to have the glory of being on stage, but who contribute greatly to the running of the theater. Uh, please hold your applause until all the names are called. These individuals are going to receive a commemorative Colonial Playhouse mug. Um, Whoa. David exciting. McCallum and Ryan McCallum support Chuck as the morning crew that you've probably heard about two to three times a week, clearing debris and leaves from the parking lots and helping with construction and maintenance in the building. Ian Goh, who's not able to be here tonight, uh, as you heard before, designated the Colonial Playhouse to receive the work and the donations from his Eagle Scout project. He organized and directed a crew of people to clean and repair inside and outside the building, and we greatly appreciate all the improvements that he did made for us. We wanna send a thank you to Elaine Strelazeki, who organized, took upon herself to organize and stock our concession stand uh, for every show this season. Anybody who's enjoyed a beverage or a snack this year has to thank Elaine for her hard work and her good taste. Uh, we will present the mugs to them uh, afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Hill. <laughs> Sako didn't get announced. Yeah, right. Surprise guest, that's okay. So Sako was dressed for the occasion, as you can see. So, woo. so anyway, uh, wow, it's kind of hard to believe 20 years that we've been doing this. Uh, well, 22, actually. <laughs> if you can't parking lot theater, which of course we did during the uh, pandemic, it's interrupt this. <laughs> My buddy Sako here, who's been uh, was our unofficial mascot, I guess you could say, or he is now. He's been around for uh, Last 11 years, what? 13 if you count the shut down. <laughs> Isn't that right? Thir uh, 13, okay, 13. Okay. So, anyway, it's nice to uh, see that you're dressed for the occasion. So, we're here to talk about the quickies, right? Uh, the quickies are actually the step grandchild of uh, the Delaware 10 Minute Play Festival, which uh, originated in City Theater in Wilmington sometime in the 90s. Um, it was a week-long extravaganza, ten, five plays each night for a whole week. They did 25 plays in a week. Uh, my buddy Todd Holtzberry was active down there, and uh, they needed people, so he invited me, so I went down and did, a, did some shows for a couple of years, had a lot of fun. They invited me back. That was, that was good. I'm like, <laughs> so uh, in 2000, when the theater finally got air conditioning, and <laughs> although you couldn't really tell today, but anyway, uh, we finally got air conditioning. Imagine doing this here with no air conditioning. We had the doors propped open. We had fans going. It's like an oven in here. So anyway, so uh, we got air conditioning, but then we had to figure out how to pay for it. So uh, let's face it, we were kind of poor then. So, so uh, how do we take advantage of the air conditioning? Well, we had the idea to do some stuff in the summer. 
So Todd had an idea that uh, we would do these like short play festival like, like they did down in Wilmington. So we did, we did it at the end of the season. We just sort of announced it. We put some solicitations out. We've got about 400 plays, which we read all of them, and that was uh, no small task. Um, the hardest part was doing uh, 392 rejection letters by mail. Oh, gosh. So, uh, you know. So Todd also, um, he named the quickies, because he liked the innuendo. And he also, uh, as a side note, he named another theater's uh, short play festival, Get Into Our Shorts. <laughs> so you see there's a little bit of a pattern there. <laughs> so yeah, we posted some submission notices, got all these plays in the mail back then, because you know there was no internet. Well, there was internet, but there was no, and none of that stuff. So the mailbox was jammed. I was going there all the time, pulling stuff out, reading all these plays. And like I said, we did eight, we had 392 or more paper rejection notices. So you know, what are you going to do? So uh, the weekend was a smash hit. We made some nice money. So then we decided to do it again the next year as an add-on because the season had already been set. So eventually we decided to fold it into the season, which we did. And um, so now the rest is history, I guess you could say. I mean, we still get all kinds of submissions. We get stuff from all across the country, Philadelphia area, even Europe and the UK. So I guess the quickies are like an international sensation. <laughs> It's just you, Ron. <laughs> He's hot in here, let me tell you. So. Sako, I'm sorry, I love you, buddy, but it's time to go. Uh. <laughs> and you know what? No one has ever seen this before, so. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be back. Don't worry, he'll be back. Actually, Brett Hersey, the, the, the playwright who wrote Stand In, who Sako appeared in, Told me he has another play where Saku destroys a Shakespearean actor. So look for that in the future. So like I said, 20 years. To, uh, you know, I was kind of hoping to be able to list some of my favorite plays and, and playwrights and stuff. And there's just too many to remember. I just can't remember them all. And, and you know, if only, if only there was a trigger or something that could remind me of these plays. It would be, hey, Ron. Will this help? <laughs> <laughs>
It's the sultry duo of Chelsea Thompson and Erin Marie Free. Oh, yeah. We are here to, to uh, present Best Supporting Actress. So the Best Supporting Actress goes to... Do, 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 woo Excuse me. Anne Allen the Manor! Presenting the Best Actress Magnolia Award, it's Jen Ooh! 
Ooh, woof. <laughs> and yours truly. Hold on, I'll be right there, Jen. And now, the Magnolia Award for the season's best director. Please welcome Wilford Brimley. <laughs> I'm sorry, please welcome J.P. Timlin. To present our Distinguished Lifetime Achievement Award, please welcome 2018 recipient Jim Copeland.